Hey, Kevin here from DIYDork.com. Today I'll show you how you can take a printed image, a graphic, a picture, whatever you want, and you can transfer it to a piece of wood that can be framed out and used like a picture, or you can even use it on like a piece of furniture or whatever project you're working on. So check this out. This is really cool. All right, so I'll show you how to transfer printed images onto wood. And uh, I'll show you three different methods so you can kind of pick and choose which way you want to go because some are messier than others, some take a little longer, or they're a little more faded or whatever. So it just kind of depends on which way you want to go. Okay, also the type of wood you can use is pretty much unlimited. You could use nice, smooth, really light colored pine like this. You could use reclaimed wood that's a little bit rougher. You could even use like OSB wafer board or particle board or pallet wood, whatever you want. But I can tell you that the smoother the wood is, the uh, better the graphics going to be. It's not going to like get kind of flaky looking. And then uh, the lighter the color of the wood, the more bright and vivid colors are going to be, especially for like a light realistic picture like this or like even a picture of your family or something like that. The lighter the wood, the brighter it's going to be. Now a black and white image like this bike or even this little kind of stamp right here will pretty much show up on anything. So anyway, I'll just give you a couple options to pick from. Now the reason I'm using these particular graphics is because I was recently contacted by a company called graphicstock.com and they wanted to sponsor one of my videos by using a graphic off of their site onto one of my projects. But I thought I would go beyond just building a single project and I would just show you a method that you could use and in unlimited ways for any project you're building. So anyway, I promised them that I would show what their site looks like and uh, the quick promotion that they're running and then I will show you how to transfer these onto the wood three different ways. So I'll do that next. All right, so I wanted to take you on a little tour of graphic stock so you can kind of figure out how to navigate the site. And uh, down here at the bottom, you can look through uh, categories or you can just do the search bar if you kind of know what to look for. So I typed in wood grain earlier and one of the images I found was this. And I thought it was a really cool idea for like a tabletop or even a headboard, maybe even a fence if you wanted to. But anyway, you could wa uh, whitewash out some old boards and then find some vintage flower graphics that you could transfer to the wood and get a really cool look. And I imagine if this was like a tabletop, you'd have the shabby chic look on top. And then I'd probably put like some modern legs on the bottom and kind of have a hybrid. That'd be kind of an interesting look. And also these little graphics here were kind of interesting. And uh, of course they have them in other colors and then they blow them up here and separate them out. And uh, I mean, just imagine some kind of an 80s theme using these two little graphics right here. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so these bikes here I thought were really awesome, kind of like a little old Schwinn Stingray looking thing. And uh, anyway, I've actually used these on a dresser already. I'll show you in a minute. It turned out pretty awesome. And of course, the same thing. They have these in all kinds of different colors and things like that. And these glasses, kind of the same thing. You could transfer them to some type of project you're working on. be kind of cool. And then these arrows I thought were really cool. The graphics just really popped to me. And uh, something I couldn't draw myself, but you could download them here and use them. They have them black and white and some other colors and things like that. All right, I thought these were really cool too. That sunburst is awesome. These uh, fireworks exploding look really cool. Transferred to a piece of wood with the wood grain showing through it. Turned it into some type of a homemade sign. This could be the background. That'd be kind of awesome. And one more thing that popped out was these old logos and these stamps. I think these would look really cool. Transferred onto a piece of pallet wood to give it that old, kind of like it come from a crate look or something like that. I think that'd be pretty awesome. So anyway, what their promotion is right now is you can sign up for a seven day free trial and you can download 140 of these graphics that you can use free and clear. You won't get in trouble for copyright or anything like that. And, uh, you can use them for personal reasons or even for commercial reasons. So you could, you know, put the images on something that you're selling or you could use them on your blog or for your business or whatever you want. And that's pretty awesome. They have 300,000 you can pick from. So there's a whole bunch to look through. And they actually have a pretty cool setup where if you want to do a year membership, it's $99 and it's unlimited. So you can download absolutely everything they have on the site for $99. And that's actually a pretty good deal, especially if you have a business like me um, at the very end of this video over here on the right side of the screen, you'll see two little TV screens. When I bought that single little TV screen image a year or two ago, I paid 15 bucks for that off of a different site. So six or seven of those images added together would already be hundred bucks. So for free, they're giving you 140. And then if you want to stick around and have unlimited access to ev absolutely everything on their site, it's only $99. So anyway, if you go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube or you click the annotation I'll add here at the bottom of the screen or I'll also put a link in the description box below, you can come here and sign up for a seven free day trial and check them out. So anyway, I'll go ahead and show you how to transfer images like these to wood now. 
Alright, so this first method is the iron-on transfer. So, first thing I did was I set my iron to the absolute highest setting it will go to, and no steam. You want it to just be totally dry heat, okay? So then, just to make it easy, I'll do one of my little tiny logos here. You can see it's printed backwards, it says premium quality, but when we flip it over, it will be uh, printed the correct way. So, first thing I'm going to do is just tape it down, just so it doesn't move on me, okay? And so we can create a hinge so we can check our work as we're going, okay? So you're going to make sure that it folds up nice and easy like that, okay? And basically it's as simple as ironing it on, but you have to really work it, okay? So first thing, just get it kind of flat, make sure it's going to lay down. And just like that, you can see it's already starting to work. And uh, you just got to really work the lines here and just keep going back and forth. Little circles like this, and then just keep checking your work. Now you can kind of see my paper is stuck, so you, if you reheat it, it will kind of unstick and you can peel it a little better. Okay, so there we go, it's starting to pop up a little more. So you just got to really work those lines. And the reason this works is because this is an e this is a laser jet print, okay, which is basically like a laser melts a waxy ink on top of the paper, so we can just heat it and kind of melt it back off, okay. So just keep working your lines. You can see right here where I'm working, there's actually a dent in the wood, so you gotta, if you want that to show, you gotta really work it. But see, it's starting to pop through now. Then my outside lines here, I'll work them a little longer, and they'll start to pop out too. But anyway, that's just a quick example of how that works. I'll show you what it looks like finished. Okay, you know, here's one here. I spent probably about six or seven minutes on it, and it popped through really nice. It still has, you can see wood grain through it, and it's still a little bit faded. It's not quite as deep and rich as the original print, but that's a really cool stamp look. That's why I think this would look really cool on a piece of pallet wood. Okay, now I can, you can also do it with color, and as you can see here, it's a print of berries and cherries, and it has that kind of, uh, you know, patina look as well. Now this one I probably spent about 20 minutes on. I mean, it did take a while, but it did work, and you can still kind of see the wood grain lines popping through, so that's just a really cool look too. But you guys spend a lot more time, and it still has that kind of faded out look, so. Anyway, that's a really, really simple method. You use the laser prints, make sure they're backwards, and then just iron them on. Take your time to really work the lines. And, uh, you know, it'll look like that at first, but once you start working the edges and all that, it'll get a really clean look. So now I'll move on to the next method. All right, so this next method is the address label transfer method, okay? So I'm just taking regular sheets of address labels and you're just going to peel the actual labels off all right and then you can just recycle them get rid of them because what you want is the waxy paper underneath it just happens to fit into your home printer so that's the cool method uh, cool part about this method is that you can use it at home you don't have to go to like a copy center to get nice laser jet uh, copies made this color print here was 59 cents and my black and white prints were like 11 cents each but with this um, you can do them at home. You don't have to pay that kind of price. Now, the labels are a little pricey. I mean, I got 25 sheets in here, and it was like $8.50 or something like that. So it, I don't remember how that works out now, but um, it's a little cheaper than a full-color print this way. But you can also use freezer paper, and it works the same way. And this is a huge roll. It's like the equivalent of 200 sheets of regular paper, okay? And it's very similar. It has just kind of a standard paper backing and then the one side is kind of slick and shiny and waxy very similar to the um, uh, label paper and this is a lot cheaper this huge roll that like i said is the equivalent of like 200 sheets it was only like 650 or something like that so it's a lot cheaper to go that method but anyway you're going to run it through your home printer your regular inkjet printer the ink will just kind of sit on top of the waxy surface it won't soak through like it normally does and you end up with something like this okay now for whatever reason my printer today decided to not print color so I had to print in black and white but you can see the huge difference it looks really faded out but once it prints it gets a lot darker now it's not going to be quite as um, sharp and bright and rich as the colors of these inkjet printers but I mean the laser jet printer but you know the inkjet is a little faded out but it's still a pretty cool little method so basically what you want to do is very similar to the iron-on method we're just going to take one of those images and we're going to flip it upside down but you have to be real careful because that ink could smear and then we're going to wipe it down okay so instead of heating it up you're just going to wipe it down all right so i'll just cut this one out real quick this little logo here because it'll be easy to do and you don't want to touch any of the printer so i'll show you what happens if you touch the printer section 
it will smear like that, okay? You don't want to do that. So, same thing, I'll just use a little bit of tape and we'll apply it to the very edge. You want to make sure not to get any tape that on the back side that would happen to overlap where the print is because you'll see a tape line, okay? So just lay your tape down. And we're going to do the same thing, make a hinge. We're going to tape on that back side. Okay, like that. And then very carefully, just place it, stick your tape, and then take a squeegee and just squeegee it down. And like that, in one pass, it will be down, but you can see it's kind of faded. So then you can just work it a little more and really get kind of, you know, kind of go the opposite direction of the wood grains that your, your uh, squeegee will kind of go into all the little divots. And the more you work it, the sharper it will get, okay? Now, like I said, it's not going to be as bright and vivid as a laser jet print, but that still looks like a nice stamp. And as you can see, it's a little more faded out than the iron-on method while ago, but this is really quick. Okay, so you can do that at home, and it's not too bad. So now I'll show you the next method, which gives you the brightest, vividest look, but it takes the longest, and it's the messiest. All right, so then this third method is kind of the goopy method, and uh, it takes the longest and is a little messier, but you get the brightest, most vivid colors. Uh, the other thing is that it's actually a little easier to screw up because when we rub it down later, it's easy to kind of start chipping away some of the color, so you got to be a little careful there. But you'll get really nice color this way. Now again, we're going to use a uh, um, office supply style uh, laser print here, so you get a really nice vivid color. Remember, it's a um, it was an ink that was um, just sort of uh, heated and melted on top of the paper, but it's not soaked in, so that we, we should be able to uh, pull it off, okay? And then the thing about this method is we're basically going to glue it down with Mod Podge, so it'll get messy, but you want to get rid of as much paper as you can, because there's kind of be, there's kind of going to be like a ghost outline around it, okay? That we'll have to take care of with some clear coat later. So when you cut it out, I recommend cutting as close as you can to your image, getting rid of as much excess, so there's not too much for later when we have to clean it up. All right, so I'll get real close to the edge here. And then putting it down is pretty easy, but then you have to wait overnight to let it dry so that it's nice and hard, because if you um, only let it sit for a couple hours, it's easy to just pull all the print off accidentally. So, all right, so there we go. If you wanted to be even more particular, you could cut even more off, but I think this would be okay for now. All right, so basically, you're just going to Mod Podge the uh, surface that you're going to put the print. All right, now I've tried this with heavy coats and with light coats, and it seems like a medium, heavy-ish coat seems to work pretty nicely. If you go too light, the print could peel off later. If you go too heavy, it takes a while to dry, and it could kind of bubble up. So you kind of see here that I'm um, going kind of thick and try to get rid of the lines if you can so that you don't have little spots here because once this dries those lines are going to stay there okay now I've also found it kind of helps to add some to your print as well so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cover my print and of course the uh, print is backwards like all the others because we're gonna flip it around to transfer it okay and again the uh, Copy prints, when I got them done at my copy center, were like 59 cents each, and the black and white prints were like 11 cents, so just keep that in mind. Maybe get a couple of prints made just in case you mess up. All right, so now that I got both of these on there, I'm going to set it down carefully, and just kind of tap it in place, and then I'm going to take a squeegee and really get it going, okay? Now you kind of want to hold it in place, because otherwise it could move on you like that, and you don't want that to, to happen, okay? And once I'm squeegeeing, you can see how I'm getting excess off, so just take an old rag or something. You want to wipe all that off, because you don't want any uh, of that glue on top, because it'll be hard to get off later. So just keep going through and uh, cleaning that off. Okay, go through and wipe down the edges just to get rid of all that excess. Now this method works really, really nice if, um, let's say you're doing a, a big image like like let's say this right here and your wood is that same size because you can cover the whole thing and you're not going to have that uh, excess glue on the outside or this paper to mess with. Okay, so basically that's it for insole. But the problem now is you have to let it sit overnight to let it dry, at least 
12, 16 hours, something like that. So I'll just skip to a couple of them that I did uh, yesterday and I'll show you how to take this off and reveal the image. All right, so here is the same uh, US outline like I just showed, but this one has been drying overnight. You can see you can't really see the glue right now, but if you turn at the right angle, you can kind of see it shining a little bit. So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting a wet rag, okay? And I'm gonna squeeze it out for the most part, so it's still just kind of damp, somewhere between damp and wet, all right? And uh, just let it start soaking the paper. What we're gonna do is actually just rub that paper away, and the print is gonna stay glued on to the front of the board. Okay, so you can see how you can start to see through it. So now what I'm doing is I'm not really applying any pressure, just enough to hold the rag onto the wood, but I'm not pushing into it. So if you do that, that's when the uh, graphic will tear off. So then you can just start rubbing like this. You can see how it's starting to come through. And you just gotta be real careful. But I thought this would be a good image to show for the example here, because it has really thin, delicate lines and some thicker color pieces as well, okay? So, let's be real careful, start rubbing it away, and see, I told you there's still going to be a ghosted line of the paper, you can see it there. Um, the more you work at it, the easier it's going to be to start taking away your print, so you just got to be real careful, alright. But uh, just work a little section at a time, don't sit there and try to do the whole thing, you can just do little circles and, and a little spot. And uh, if you get it too wet, it's, it could possibly start to take the print away too. It'll start eating through that Mod Podge. So just try to keep your, your rag just a little damp, but not, not super soaking wet. All right, so just be real careful. Like I said, not a lot of pressure. Just start wiping it away. Looks pretty good. And I might just go ahead and skip to a couple other examples I've done to show you what it looks like after um, you peel the paper away because it looks good now because it's wet, but once it dries that ghosted image of where all this paper was is going to pop back up. Actually, you can see right here. See, I can still see it a little bit. These have dried, but watch what happens. Um, I can start to work them a little bit to try to get rid of some of the paper like that spot right there and then down here in the corner. But once it gets wet, it looks good. Okay, so that's why uh, with this type style, you can just clear coat it and it should look pretty good. I'll do the same thing over here on this one. All right. See how you can still see that little bit of a ghosted image. So that's the one issue with this is although the colors are really nice, you can still kind of see that paper a little bit. So that, that's kind of a bummer. All right, so anyway, I'll just keep working this a little bit. I'll show you what happens if you rub too much. See how crisp and clean it is. Um, you can still read Chicago and all that. If I go too far, here's what happens. You can start to rub it off. And actually, I glued this one down pretty good. It's taken a while to come down, but there we go. See if you just rub way, way too hard. See how it's starting to flake off a little bit. I mean, that could be a cool effect for kind of a you know an old rustic distressed look, but you just want to be careful and just take it easy. You can kind of go layer by layer. You could basically, uh, you know, get it gone where it's still kind of ghosted like this. Let it dry, then get your rag damp again and uh, take it off. But Anyway, I'll show you some examples of what this looks like um, after they've dried, and then I'll clear coat them to show you how much better they look after that, too. All right, so again, here are the ironed on graphics that I did. These are raw without clear coat. All right, and here it is with clear coat. You can see it enriching the color just a little bit, gave it a nice protective shine, but it still has that kind of, uh, you know, rustic stamp print look to it. Okay, here is a print made with the address labels that's raw without clear coat. All right, and here it is after a quick spray clear. You can see it enriching the color just a little bit, but it still has that faded old stamp look. All right, and here's a couple of graphics done with the Mod Podge. You can still see some of that ghosted paper on them. These are raw without clear coat. All right, and here they are after a quick spray clear. You can see how rich that color is. It looks really nice. All that ghosting paper pretty much went away unless you look really, really close. The main issue with this is at the right angle, you can see all the Mod Podge. See all the lines there? That's not cool. So although I spray cleared it, I guess the one thing you could do is after it dries and it has that ghosted paper look, you could Mod Podge over the whole thing again to act as a clear coat. And maybe that would get rid of spots like this where there is no Mod Podge underneath. And then spray clear over that as well. But this gets a really crisp, clean, bright color, but then there's still that little bit of trade-off. 
All right, so if you remember earlier, I told you that I did a dresser and put some of these graphics on there. So here's what it looked like when I first started. It looked okay from the front, but the sides were really beat up and it needed some work. So here's what I did to it. All right, so I painted the body white. It looked really nice with some deep teal lower drawers. And then the legs and the top drawer, I did just natural wood. And then I actually printed on the uh, bite graphics using the iron-on method. So it has kind of a really cool, subtle look. Kind of blends in with the... Uh, mid-century modern style of the dresser. So there you go. That's a really cool way to use this on a real-life scenario. Now I'll show you one more way I've used it. All right, and then here is the little cat framed out picture I had for the beginning of the video. And I found this image on graphic stock as well, the cat wearing the glasses. I thought it was kind of cool. So I transferred it to wood, and that's why it flip-flopped over. You can still kind of see the wood grain going through it. And then I framed it out with sort of like a red painted shadow frame that I made. It's real simple. So I thought it would be kind of a cool way to frame out something like this that was mounted to wood. Now I used the Goopy Mod Podge method on this to uh, glue it down and you know of course I had all that paper on there so I rubbed it with a rag then I used my fingers to get most of it off you can see I accidentally left a little bit right there I should have rubbed that off and then it just slightly toward the very top edge but anyway that's kind of a realistic expectation of what you can get out of this you know it's gonna darken up because of the wood color it's not a white background but it's still a really nice sharp image and then you could frame it out with something like this and look pretty cool so there you go that's a couple of different ways I've used it in uh, real life examples